Almost every single week lately, I've been talking directly to my channel members, letting them ask me questions, and then responding in kind. So I encourage you in the comments below this video to ask away anything you want, and we'll start a new round. J2K2610, that's a name. Do you watch other YouTube movie critics slash reviewers, and do you enjoy watching them? Not really, I don't watch a lot of YouTube. I, I like Smosh a lot, I've been watching them. I never watched them before, I just started watching their videos a few months ago, I've been down the rabbit hole. I don't know how it was even introduced to me. Uh, I really like everything they put out. It's, I think it's very funny, very humorous. I, I don't know why. I guess it's because they just have like a, a life to their stuff and they're very lively. And that's not a movie review channel, by the way. I just like their commentary on things and their, their every blank ever series is really funny to me. Uh, my daughter loves it too, she's 12. So we, we kind of bond watching that stuff and it makes me feel young again. As for movie critics, I know of a bunch of them. I communicate with some of them on a pretty regular basis. I'll give shout outs to those that I think are doing a great job. And they're not even necessarily people that I agree with on a lot of movies or even enjoy their content, but I can recognize what they're doing and how much work they're putting in. And to me, that's worth its weight in gold. I used to watch a lot of Red Letter Media. I really like their Tim and Eric style humor, that Adult Swim approach. I haven't watched them in months. And it's not because I don't like them anymore. I think they're brilliant. I think they're talented. I just don't have any time anymore between watching Smosh videos and doing other stuff. No, joking. Smosh is like in the background mostly or when I'm quickly eating lunch, I'll put on like a few videos. For the most part, no, I just, I wanna have my own opinions and I don't want them tarnished by other critics, which can often happen. And that's why I love my audience here. They will be the first to tell me if I'm wrong on a video in a respectful way, typically, and we can have a civil debate about it. Uh, that, that's what's so good. People have their own minds here. Instead of being sheep-like with some of these other YouTube critic channels where they just seem to follow along with whatever's being thrown at them, typically it's not even about a movie review, it's just some random shit. The person I talk to the most is probably Jonathan Paula. He used to have a YouTube channel, well he still does, he just doesn't do it anymore. But he had Jog Wheel. You might know him from the uh, Is It Okay to Microwave This series, which I've never even seen. I, I know it's kind of a pioneer of YouTube back in the day. Uh, but also I was familiar with him from Movie Night, where, I, where he did very kind of straightforward movie reviews, which is crazy to think about nowadays. Everyone has to have a gimmick. He always put in a good amount of research. There were some good facts behind his reviews. They didn't overstay their welcome. He had a nice review system. Yeah, I really liked his approach. He was he was very polished. Tony from Hack the Movies, he's part of Cinemassacre, which is the angry video game nerd. Tony's awesome. He talks to me constantly. He's always got little gems to throw my way. Uh, we'll debate about movies here and there, you know, just have fun with it. He's had me on his show a couple times. I've had him on a few times. Yeah, he's great. And their channel's blowing up like crazy, Hack the Movies. So I would definitely check them out if you haven't. They do long form video discussion. I mean, we're talking, hour, two hour videos. And he has lots of fun cameos on, lots of fun guests. It's a it's a good time over there. I'd love to be on there some point, but I'm in Minnesota, so he'd have to fly my ass out. And I don't have the clout to justify that yet. Someday maybe. I recently brought up Chris Stockman in a previous video. And honestly, I was always jealous of the guy, not because I thought he was super talented at what he did or, or super pro at it. It was because he was so good at getting everything out there right away. He would be first to market and he'd let you know that. He'd, he'd be a little braggadocious about it. But uh, you know, you have to respect that game. Um, even if I didn't agree with a ton of what he said and I wasn't even the biggest fan of, you know, kind of how he communicated with people. I, I mean, there, there's no, you gotta respect it. You gotta respect the struggles. And now he's making his own movie and that to me is just phenomenal. I would, I would, I envy that so much to be able to get where he's at and to put his passion on display, to put his work out there for others to judge. That's the ultimate, you know, he's come full circle. His presumed buddy, John Flickinger, who I know they've been on each other's shows multiple times. I keep tabs, I keep tabs on them. I'm interested in what they're doing because they're in the same sphere as me. Um, I've had some of them on the show. John was supposed to come on my show a long time ago, but he had family issues at the last minute. It didn't work out and we just kind of fell out of communication. John, we should do something together if you ever see this. Uh, it would be great. You're, you're one of the, the last ones that I haven't really collabed with in any meaningful way. Um, at least come on my show. You know, I, I, I rarely get invited to other people's programs. I'm just accepting of that at this point. I'm a giver, not a taker. 
Flickin' Drew's got a couple channels. I don't know how often he updates both of them. Like me, I don't do anything on my second channel. It's just lying dormant for the day that I can eventually do something with it again. But he, he puts out a lot of great content. He's very dynamic. He's very over the top. And uh, he really likes American Psycho. He's like all in on American Psycho. It's a good movie. Don't get me wrong, John, but... I mean, full full dick in for that movie. It's it's amazing. If you're a horror slash thriller type of guy or gal, I would give Bloodbath and Beyond a shout out or check them out, subscribe, do whatever. They've been in a very similar situation as me over the years where there was the whole demonetization thing. They're not sure, you know, if they should start a new channel, which they did. Um, I don't know how it's going yet. I have to I have to reach out. It's been a it's been a while since I've talked to them, so yeah. But they're a great group of guys over there. Just just putting in the work. Um, and they put out good material, very good stuff. There are some smaller YouTube critics coming in out of the woodwork as well. Sometimes they comment, so I would check out the comments on this video, see if any of them, you know, stick out to you. If you are making, you know, movies on YouTube, give yourself a shout out, that's fine, I won't delete your comment. Just don't post a link, because YouTube will oftentimes remove that without me knowing, and I don't want to go through my spam, that's just a... I mean, that's just a nightmare. The people I would mention anyways, you already know, so it's a little boring. I don't have bad blood with anybody. Uh, the, the ones that I've kind of shit on in the past, I don't actually know or have spoken to. I just can tell when there's a grift going on or when there's some really just bad approach to movie criticism going on, and I will say something about it. Uh, Jeremy Johns, I've mentioned before, he's like, you know, one of the tops as well. I mean, what do you say? The guy's very frantic, he's very fun, he's very engaging. Yeah, it's, it's, you, you know him. He, I appreciate what he does. We, let's move on. Champ asks, favorite movie slash TV reaction channels? No. Defant asks, what's a time or moment when you realized you loved movies? I may have addressed this a long time ago, but I'll never forget when I saw Jurassic Park in theaters, still one of my favorite films, with my mom, who doesn't go to movies often or even sit down and watch movies often. She's a little too ADD to sit still for that, but she took me. I think it's one of the only times just her and I went to a film in history. I always went with my dad uh, and my brother. That, that was like our thing. So to go to that movie when I was in probably fourth grade or something, it was it was middle school, I was blown away. I, I, I was terrified of that intro where the raptor that pulls the guy in, he's like, shoot -a! shoot -a! The sound effects were on point. The Everything about it was so freaking good. And my mom and I was just sitting there eating our popcorn, just in awe of everything unfolding. Steven Spielberg, he put magic on the big screen and he put magic in my heart. And after that film came out, I was never the same. It changed me, both emotionally and spiritually when it comes to cinema. Uh, the craft, the effects, everything that went into that movie was just top of the line and I'll never forget it. And I recently brought it up to my mom and uh, she did forget it. She didn't know she saw that with me, so. Yeah. Thanks, Mom. Nayabo317, maybe? I'm not good with this stuff. Which movie disappointed you the most when you were a kid? And which one in your adult life? Without doing a lot of soul searching and historical research into where I was as a child and what movie bothered me the most, first thing that comes to mind is Ninja Turtles 3. I don't, was it called Turtles in Time? I know the video game was. I think it's just Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3. There might have been a, like a, a subheading there. I can't remember, but man, that movie sucked. Still does. They, they go to, you know, they go to Japan. It's Shredder's not in it. Just, just a all around disappointing film. The action's horrible. The costumes are miserable. Everything about it's worse than its predecessors. So yeah, Ninja Turtles 3, what a joke. I think if anybody has been watching this channel for a while, you probably know what my most disappointing movie is in recent memory, and that's The Last Jedi. I'm not going to go into a thing about it. There are a lot of people that love the film. That's great. I've said everything I need to say multiple times over. We're not going to do it. We're not going to get upset again. How do you make a new Star Wars trilogy and not put Luke, Han, and Leia on screen together at least one time? Uh, how? And now you can't because one of them's dead in real life, another's dead in the film property, and now they're all dead! They're all dead! In one way or the other, they're all dead. What a, what a complete and absolute joke. Let's close out. 
All right, that's it for the first round of questioning. I apologize if I didn't address yours. I tried to get to them all. Thank you very much for all these questions. Like I said, we're starting over. Um, if you have more to ask me, ask away. It can be on movies, it can be on personal life, it can be on, you know, the stock market. Uh, spoiler, I know nothing about that. There's movies that come out around the holidays. We can talk about that as well. So let me know in the comments and uh, hopefully I'll see you soon. Take care. You sly son of a bitch. You made it to the end of the video without turning away. I guess you're not sly for that. You're just a patient person. In which case, I'm going to keep you a little bit longer to say subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Make sure to like the video and come join me on Patreon if you haven't. Patreon.com slash Adam Does Movies just in time for the holidays or right here on YouTube via the join button. Numbers are getting low. It's sad to see it. You hate to see it. It would be nice to have a little bit more support. I'm putting in a lot of work. I think you could throw a dollar at me. I mean, I'm not telling you what to do with your life, but someone's got to.